This season, St. Pauli returned to Germany's top division after a 13-year absence, winning the Bundesliga 2 with 69 points. The celebration scenes seemed electric in this passionate fan base, so today I will be using an updated database to take this club into the Bundesliga for the 2024-25 season to see what they could achieve. And diving in, here we are using the updated data base. If we go onto the competition tab, you can see here St. Pauli have already been promoted with, alongside Holston Kill. There is technically one game of the season remaining. We are currently on 66 points, but you can see this is the last, uh, the, using the real fixtures and stuff, Weisbaden was their final game of the season, and this is where we're going to take things over. We are going to go back into the Bundesliga, into Germany's top flight, and see what we can do. They've left City rivals Hamburg in the second tier, and they're going back to the promised land, the top tier of German football. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see what we can do here. We will have a transfer window, which is very uncommon, in these rebuilds. I usually block them out off the rip, but we are going to have a transfer window. The budget hasn't really kicked in yet. I imagine this first season, because of the, some of the budgets and stuff in these real-time databases, can be a bit skewy, so we're going to have to see what we can do. If you do want to see and understand how I'm doing this using the real-life database, I'll leave a link to that video down in the description. Uh, it's already on the channel. You can go and check that out. But we've got some work to do before we get into season one. Let's see if we can bring anyone in to bolster this squad. So we had to try and wheel and deal in this summer window, and we have done just that. We've only spent £5.75 million, pounds and we've managed to bring in seven players. Now, we've not actually purchased anyone. We've signed two players on free transfers. I'll talk about them in a minute. But the players that we've bought in are on loan, and we are paying loan fees for them. I felt like this was the right way to do this and hopefully give us enough about the squad for season number one to see what we can do back in the Bundesliga. First of all, was Tom Roth who come in from Dortmund. He is going to be our new choice uh, at left back. I have not seen this guy before. His attribute spread is absolutely outstanding. Plus the fact that he's six foot four, he's only 19 years of age. He looks like he could be a monster. He's valued not a lot right now, up to 5.6 million pounds. And he'd be a player who I would love to pull in from Dortmund if we possibly could. We're paying 1.1 million pounds for him for the season. Next up is Timo Schelleck. He comes in again on loan. Uh, not necessarily gonna be the best option for us, but you know how FM gets this. Year. You need your goalkeepers, don't you? Otherwise, they get money about it. Bartos Biliek is a the next player coming in again on loan. He's going to be our first choice striker for the season. 22 years of age, six foot three, capped by the Polish under 21s as well. He comes in on loan from Wolfsburg for 1.2 million pounds, and I think he could be a key man for us this season. Next up is the former Manchester United central midfielder Isaac Hansen Aaron. Uh, I've probably butchered that Norwegians. So I apologise, uh, but yeah, again, 2.9 million pounds. For him coming in on loan four that season again has a nice attribute spread to play in the position that we want him to and then the last loan signing is linton Mani mania mania um again looks like a very good winger the fact that he can play on both sides really fast 17 pace 16 acceleration is very key for us here uh but yeah the fact that he can play on both sides is absolutely electric they are all of our loan signings and we have guy have managed to go out and get there a couple of free transfers as well sheriff sinyan comes in from from a, uh, from a free transfer, he's a Gambian international, age 26, centre back, six foot two. Uh, looks like a very good physical presence for us to pick up on a free. And the last one is Joshua King. You will notice this guy and recognise this guy if you've watched Premier League football over the past couple of years. He's on the older side now, age 32. Brackets, that's still younger than I am. Um, but uh, yeah, on the older side now, but could probably do a job for us. Can also play on the left as well as playing up front. So if we go and have a look at the tactic for today, we are rocking G1. IR's Batman tactic. It is a 4-3-3 because you guys like to see how these actually get on in other saves, not just tests. Um, I will leave a link to that tactic down in the description as well. But this is our best 11 uh, going into the season. And as you can see, lots of the lone players are coming in uh, and are actually in our starting 11, which isn't something I usually like, but in these updated databases is something you definitely have to do. Um, we've got a really nice squad. I'm quite happy with it. I also have to give a shout out to this glorious mustache man, Jackson Irvine as well, the Australian international. Uh, actually does look very, very good here. Um, 
a really, really nice attribute spread for him to play as the base of this midfield three is that DM on support. But let's go and have a look at the competitions that we are in because we are in Germany. We have two this season, the Pokal and the Bundesliga. If we go and take a look at the league preview, uh, we are not the worst team in the division, which is fantastic for me to see. Dusseldorf and Holsten Kiel are the two teams below us. Um, I don't want to finish in that promotion relegation playoff, so we need to finish 15th or higher. That is the main goal this season. Um, and Bayern, in this world, no Vincent Company as their manager. They actually got Zinedine Zidane as their manager, so um, shout out to him. He's going to make things very awkward for us whilst being Bayern Munich manager. Anyway, we're going to simulate season one to see how this first season with St. Pauli can go in the Bundesliga. As always in Germany, we kicked off the season with the DFB Pokal and we made our first round tie a lot more tricky than it needed to be. Despite dominating the game against lower league Weisbaden, we needed extra time to progress into the second round. Following that, we dispatched Heidenheim with ease before facing Bayer Leverkusen at home in the third round. Jeremy Frimpong gave Leverkusen the lead in the 15th minute, but we turned on the style and took control of the game. Bielek pulled us level on the 25th minute before Jackson Irvine headed us into the lead just before half time. Then in the second half, Bielek scored his second of the game before adding a fourth goal in the 90th minute to see us move into a surprising Pokal quarter final. We were at home for this one and had to face Dortmund, but we started the game strong and even opened up a two goal lead going into half time. But in the second half, we seemingly ran out of steam as Dortmund came roaring back into the game with goals from the Mecha and Daniel Marlin. Those goals saw the game move into extra time where wonder kid Yusuf Makoko guided the ball home from inside the area for a decisive goal and to send Dortmund through to the semis and see our impressive cut run come to an end. However, our main goal of the season was Bundesliga survival and we got off to a shocker in the league, suffering defeats in our first three games of the campaign in August. But we did manage to beat both fellow promoted sides the following month to right the ship just a little bit. We even managed to get a shock result against Bayern, beating them 2-1 at home. Our key man this season was lone striker Bartos Bielek, who scored 23 goals in all competitions this season, and he has an optional future fee of £3.3 million in the deal from Wolfsburg, and that might just be something we look to activate in the summer. We suffered defeat against Bayer Leverkusen in the first game after the winter break, but we then went on a remarkable 17-game unbeaten run to close out the season. Granted, there are a lot of draws in there, but at least it shows we're a difficult team to beat. Naturally, with those results, we did a little bit better than just survive this season as we finished the year in sixth in the Bundesliga table and even qualified for the Europa Conference League next season. The lucrative Bundesliga money has kicked in and we have a healthy transfer budget of £23 million to spend this summer and we're going to need the squad depth with the extra European games to come next season. So guys, we had some transfer funds to spend and we did just that we activated some of the loan signings and some of the future fees that we did have uh, we did have a couple players go out but it's not really broken the bank just over half a million pounds worth of players sold uh, but the players on the incoming side we activated tom roth he is now our left back uh, we bought him from dortmund which is great to see 5.25 million pounds could rise to 7.75 i'm all right with it our top goal scorer last season Yes, we activated the £3.3 .3 million clause in his contract. He is now our player as well. We also spent 800 k on potentially a new goalkeeper. We've got two goalkeepers coming in. This guy is an absolute tree. He's six for eight. Is uh, Sher Sherapen is how, is how I'm going to probably butcher that. He comes in from Brighton for 800 k But we also signed another big lad as well in another six for eight goalkeeper. Lucas Bergström, he comes in on loan from Chelsea. Uh, I'm not really sure which one is going to actually win the goalkeeper jersey for the season but i'm gonna leave that up to my assistant manager a couple of freebies in here as well uh victor olatunji comes in as a striker option for us he's gonna be a squad player high strength at 17 good jumping reach he is six foot four gives us a little bit of a different option up front and we also signed tim scott 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 maybe uh to play on the right hand side to be honest he can kind of play in a lot of key positions for us and has a very good decent attribute spread as well which is really nice to see 
The loans do continue, though, again from Premier League clubs. We picked up Calvin Ramsey on loan for £2 million for the season. He's going to be our new right back coming in from Liverpool. Obviously, he's not getting past Trent for Liverpool right now, and you can kind of understand why. So we will take him on loan for £2 million for the season. We also picked up uh, Simon uh, Adingra coming in from Brighton. 16 pace, 16 acceleration, 16 dribbling, 16 flair. He loves the 16, and he's going to come in on our left-hand side. Uh, we paid £3 million for him on loan for the season, uh, and it seems like a very good option for us. We also picked up Chiquinho, is how I'm probably going to butcher this lad's name from Cape Verde. Um, looks like a very good player as well. 16 flair and dribbling for him along with that acceleration, but can play on both sides again. Key versatility needed. And we do need that squad depth this season. He comes in from Wolves for £2.4 million. One final loan then is Aiden. Um, former Bayern man, I believe. He plays at Bayern. Yes, former Bayern man. He is at Galatasaray now. We picked him up on loan for 120 k for the season, uh, having barely played for Gala in uh, this season. And then the last player that we signed on a, uh, on a fee was £2 million for Matteo Lovato. Centre-back option coming in for a six foot two. He's a monster in this game. If you've not used him and you're on a lower budget, he is very good. And we also signed this man, Hossolu. Could win a Champions League this year from Real Madrid. Who knows in real life? Uh, I can't remember when the final is. I can't remember if this video is going out before or after the final. So maybe he's won the Champions League at this point who knows um but yes he is coming in on a free transfer but you can see lots of players coming in because we do need that for the european football that we are going to play this season despite it only being the conference league if we quick pick without restriction this is how we are set up this season obviously we still do have several loans in here um but i actually like this team i think it's going to look really good jackson Irvin, irvine alongside hartel in the midfield is really really nice for us we've got a nice spine of the team uh good defense tom roth coming in as a massive signing for us calvin ramsey will get better than that three star with game time so i'm looking forward to seeing what he can do and competitions wise here we are we do have europe for the first time in terms of the conference league obviously being a team from the bundesliga we should do pretty well in this one uh but only time will tell with that we do have to qualify for the competition however in the bundesliga though if we have a look at the season preview leipzig won the title last year uh, no title for zidane we are predicted to finish in 15th 400 to 1 to win the title i don't think that's going to be on the agenda just yet uh, but again progression up the league another european place for next season would be great to keep that money coming in let's get to simulating season number two Let's kick off the Season 2 recap with the Bundesliga as we had a little bit of a sluggish start to the campaign as all of the new players that we'd signed were settling into the team. But once we moved into September, we managed to put together a 14-game unbeaten run moving into the winter break. After making his loan signing permanent in the summer, Bartos Bielek rewarded us with a huge return of 26 goals in all competitions, including 10 in the Bundesliga. And I wanted to give a shout out to Jackson Irvine who had the highest average rating in the league this season with a 7.29 average rating across his 31 appearances. And again, look at that man, he is gorgeous. After the winter break, we did suffer a few more defeats in the second half of the season, but still had pockets of wins to see us maintain a solid league position throughout the campaign. We did stumble a little bit to close out the season with two draws along with a defeat against Bayern, but we improved on last season's sixth place finish to finish in fifth this time around with 64 points. That fifth place finish meant that we will be playing in the Europa League next season. In the Pokal this season, we were much more convincing in the earlier rounds, dispatching lower league opposition all the way through to the quarterfinals where we then knocked out Schalke. We marched on into the semi-finals where we faced Bayern Munich and we would be away for this one. This was a bit more of a cagey game but in the 69th minute Harry Kane put Bayern into the lead converting from the penalty spot. We battled back in this one and struggled to make a bit of a breakthrough until Matteo Lovato headed home a corner at the near post to send the game to extra time. The extra 30 minutes couldn't separate us so the game would have to be settled via penalty shootout where our our goalkeeper Lucas Bergstrom came up clutch, saving Bayern's first two penalties from Harry Kane and Michael Elise. 
Our players scored all four of their spot kicks, meaning we knocked Bayern out at the semi-final stage and moved into the Pokal final. Here we face Freiburg, who finished ninth in the Bundesliga, but it was our ill discipline that cost us in this one as he gave away a penalty in each half that Vincenzo Grifo was on hand to score on both occasions. Marcel Hartel did score for us with 10 minutes of the game to go, but it was too little too late to see us watch Freiburg lift the Pokal trophy up high. And finally, in the Europa Conference League, where we had to qualify for the competition proper, but TSC from Serbia put up very little fight in this one, losing the tie 10-2 on aggregate. So we moved into the league phase where we had some lovely games across Europe, but dominated all of the games, winning all six fixtures to finish top of the table and progress automatically into the round of 16. Here we face Viking FK, the Norwegian champions, and the first game on the road was an eye-opener as despite being in control of the game, we failed to score to see the game end 0-0. But back in Germany, things were a little bit more in our favour as we continued to dominate the tie, but actually managed managed to score on this occasion, winning the game 4-1 on the night to advance to the quarterfinals. Up next was Liga Warsaw from Poland and this tie was much more routine for us as we were in complete control of the first leg, winning 3-0 at home before securing a 3-1 win on the road to coast into the semis. It was French opposition up next in the face of Nice and we travelled to the south of France for the first leg. And we weren't really at the races for this one as Marcel Hartel saw his first half penalty come crashing back off the post before the French side scored a goal either side of half time to take a two goal lead into the second leg. But in this one, we really brought our shooting boots. Back home in Germany, we ripped through Nice, seemingly scoring with every opportunity that we were having on goal. So much so that we did overturn that two goal deficit. We actually smashed Nice out to the water, winning the game 7 1 on the night, meaning we moved into the final with a 7 3 aggregate win. And then we were handed a little bit of a sucker punch in the final as we had to take on Manchester United and their new manager, Antonio Conte. Naturally, we were under the pump for large portions of this game, but managed to take it to extra time, where United's depth took over as substitutes Ricardo Horta and Rasmus Hoyland scored in the 116th and 119th minutes respectively to see Manchester United lift the Europa Conference League. This was an outstanding season, but I'm kind of seeing it as an opportunity missed, ultimately ending the season empty-handed. Funds continue to accumulate in our bank balance and we have a transfer budget of £36 million pounds moving into into the summer. Right guys, transfer update going into season number three and we have been active in the transfer market. Again, spending 33 and a half million, but I feel we've also been a bit frugal as well, pulling in several players on free transfers. Starting up, we spent 17 and a half million pounds on this man, Bradley Locko. He looks like a fantastic left back, supremely well-rounded, very athletic, coming in from Middlesbrough for 17 and a half million pounds. We continue the trend this season of turning loan signings into permanent deals as we picked up Calvin Ramsey from Liverpool for 9.25 million pounds after having a very good year for us last time. Uh, it was time to activate the uh, purchase agreement on him and he comes in to be our full-time right back. We also picked up Killian Sardella, the uh, Belgian centre-back. He kind of is a centre-back and kind of play right back as well. Gives us that versatility option again. He is 24 air years of age and it looks like he's had a move to Juve and not really played 3.9 million pounds for him Gino Infantino comes in from Fiorentina as well supremely well-rounded to play in these midfield positions I think he can be a real creative force for us moving forward and that 16 natural fitness is very very good for a central midfield position we also converted the signing of Lucas Bergström from the loan coming in he did very very well for us obviously saving the penalties to not Bayern out of the Pokal. He needs a lot of work to be fair. Nine positioning isn't great, but he is a monster at six foot eight with the jumping reach and the aerial reach that he does have. So he can hopefully go from strength to strength. We spent 130k on this man, Tyler Binden. Another, uh, this is a, this guy's a Kiwi, supremely well-rounded in the defensive attributes. Apart from probably the tackling, I would probably say I'd like a little bit more work on. He is only 21, six foot six, international cap, so uh, a nice pedigree as well. And Jakob Port is the last player that we have signed for 56k again six foot two 29 years of age has what he needs to be a squad player for us in the defensive positions and for 56k 
you can't really argue about it. Now we move into the freebies though. Alexandra Mitrovic is here. He's going to be our starting striker for the season. His contract ended in Saudi. We picked him up. He is 31 years of age, but still has all the attributes that you need. Good off the ball, good balance, jump and reach, strength as well. 19 strength is crazy for him. I don't know what's been going on in his career here that he's been playing some of these positions, but attacking midfield left and right and then defense midfield makes absolutely no sense to me. I don't, I don't know what's happening there but we pick him up as a free he's going to be our striker he's not playing any of those Kingsley comes in as a right back cover for us obviously he's not going to play ahead of Calvin Ramsey but you do need good players in every position and his physical gifts do really allow us to be aggressive in those positions as well on a free transfer Mika Hamilton the former Manchester City man comes in can play in central midfield can play out wide again a very good pickup on a free transfer we also picked up uh, Harvey Vale as well. Left back cover can play basically anywhere. It's like when you say, uh, Harvey, what position do you play? And he just goes, yes. The only thing he can't do is centre back, which if I wanted to train him, he could probably end up playing that by the end of the season. Again, another free transfer. And Tim Schreiber is another goalkeeper for us. You can never have too many goalkeepers this time around. He comes in again, free transfer. And the last one, Simon uh, Adingra coming in from Brighton. They let him go. So after having a season on loan for us last year, where he did pretty well, 11 goals and seven assists in 30 Bundesliga appearances. Pretty darn good if you ask me for a team just getting promoted. Uh, we took him on a free transfer to now become our players so if we go and have a look at our best 11 if we quick pick without restriction this is how we are set up for the year Mitro coming in up top is absolutely massive for us but we've made the transition to actually owning a lot more of our players than relying on loans which is great to see I'm liking the team I'm liking our depth options I think we can really go far in a couple of competitions this season and speaking of a couple of competitions we do have the Pokal and the Bundesliga but this year we also have the Europa League as well whoa 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 if you know you know and um, we are going into the Bundesliga though in season number three Bayern did get their hands on the title last time around but we are now 150 to 1 to win the league we were 400 to 1 last season we are making massive strides up the table uh, which obviously helps massively with European football I want European football again let's see what we can achieve in season number three This season started with the DFB Pokal, where we dumped Dynamo Dresden, Bayer Leverkusen and Oldsburg out in the early rounds to set up a quarter final with Mainz. We were on the road for this one and it was a bit of a goal fest with goals flying in for both sides. But even after extra time, we couldn't be separated, so it had to be decided via penalty shootout. We were very impressive, scoring all five of our penalties, which allowed Lucas Bergstrom to be our shootout hero yet again, denying Luis Felix to see us move onwards into the semi-finals. It was Werder Bremen in our way of a second Pokal final in a row, and we drew first blood in this one as Alexandra Mitrovic volleyed home after a defensive mix-up. Bremen did pull themselves level in the second half, but with 10 minutes of the 90 remaining, Simon Adingra raced into the penalty area and fired us into the final. This season, we take on Dortmund, and it was the Yellow Wall who were celebrating first, thanks to Falkrug giving them the lead early from the spot. We did manage to strike back on the 22nd minute through Tim Skarki, but in the second half, with only their second shot on target of the game, Karim Adeyemi remained composed to see Dortmund lift the Pokal trophy and hand us a runners-up medal for a second season in a row. But with back-to-back -back Pokal final appearances, you can see that we're not a team to be messed with in Germany, and that was apparent in our Bundesliga campaign as we looked really impressive in the first half of the season. Alexandra Mitrovic was exactly what I expected this season, contributing 36 goals in 44 appearances in all competitions, but given his advancing years, we didn't renew his contract, so he will head back to Saudi Arabia for a second stint next season. Also, after making his loan signing permanent in the summer, Cal Calvin Ramsey went from strength to strength this season and was our highest average rated player for the entire season with a 7.24 rating and provided us with a huge 21 assists in all competitions. After the winter break, our form was patchy to say the least, but we did manage to pick up some key wins against the likes of Gladbach and Dortmund. We finished the season on 
53 points, which was actually less than last season. But in 2027, it was good enough to see us finish third in the Bundesliga and make it into next season's Champions League for the first time ever. And speaking of European competition, this year we entered the Europa League at the league phase and we even went unbeaten with seven of those games resulting in us gaining all three points. Those results meant that we finished the league phase on 22 points and were second in the table behind Aston Villa, so we'd move into the round of 16 automatically. It was an all-German affair in the round of 16 as we faced Freiburg and got off to a flying start in the first leg as Micha Hamilton opened the scoring with a calmly taken finish inside the area. Freiburg did make the game all square in the second half, but we claimed the advantage in the tie with Chiquinho scoring for us in the 81st minute. And then in the second leg, back at home, we provided a fantastic defensive effort to keep a clean sheet with Mitro bagging another goal for us to see us move forward with a 3-1 aggregate win. In the quarterfinals, we faced AZ Alkmaar from the Netherlands and again, we started the game hot, racing out to a three goal lead inside the opening 35 minutes. However, the Dutch side came out swinging after the third went in and bagged a goal in each half to see the game end 3-2, with us taking a slender lead back to Germany. The second leg was much more routine for us though, as we dominated from start to finish, winning the game 3-0 on the night and 6-2 on aggregate. Moving on into the semi-final, we faced Spanish opposition as we faced Athletic Bilbao, and we had to travel to Spain for the first leg this time. Goals went in for both sides after Marcel Hartel saw his seventh minute penalty saved by Unai Simon. There was a flurry of goals in 25 second half minutes, but it was the Spaniards who came out on top with a 3-2 win, giving us an uphill task in the second leg. But that was a task that we were very much up for, as Alexander Mitrovic scored two goals inside the first half to put us into an aggregate lead. On the stroke of halftime, we were all square again as Inaki Williams robbed Bradley Locko of the ball and smashed it home beyond Bergstrom. Then as I thought the tie was going to extra time, that beautiful moustache man Jackson Irvine curled one in from the edge of the area to send us into a second European final in a row. Yet again, we were facing English opposition in this one as we were taking the field against Newcastle United. And we were quickly chasing the game as Ven Botman put Newcastle into the lead on the 29th minute with Bergstrom thinking he probably should have done a lot better. To my surprise, we were actually the better team in this one despite all of Newcastle's riches and Marcel Hartel pulled us level just after the hour mark and it was one-way traffic following that. Then, for a second game in a row, I thought we were heading to extra time, but managed to strike again through substitute Gino Infantino converting from close range in the 93rd minute to see us crowned Europa League champions. Season three was a monumental stride forward for the club as we've added our first major trophy to the trophy cabinet, but I really do want to add that first ever Bundesliga title. We have a huge transfer budget of just under 50 million pounds to spend as we take this team into the Champions League for the first time. So transfer update for season number four and we've had some crazy stuff going on this time around. On the right hand side of the screen we have had one major outgoing. Bradley Locko has now gone over back to England actually because he signed in from Middlesbrough. He's now gone over to Aston Villa for 30 million quid um, which you can't begrudge him. He's been very very good for us but yeah 30 million quid is a very good signing for a uh, very good sell for us. We've also sold a couple of other players as well for smaller fees as well, amounting to a total of £37 million. But we've been active in the transfer market as well, pulling in lots of players, £49.5 million spent. First of which is, uh, and the most expensive of which, is Nicholas Paz coming in from Brentford for £15.5 million. He is a right back, um, can play as a centre back, can also play as a left back. So again, very good squad versatility option. He's actually been capped by Argentina, which goes to show the pedigree that he does have. But in the left back spot to replace Loco, we sign this guy, Juan Miranda. He comes in. This guy is superb technically. 16 penalties, 16 long throws, uh, free kick taking, crossing, anticipation, work rate. He's a very, very good left back for us. He came in from Real Betis for 11 million quid. Jordan Zamora come in from Udinese for 9 million as well. Again, another left back option. You never know who and how many you are going to need in this particular instance. We spent 9 million pounds on Maximo Perón. He comes in from 
Manchester City. Defensive midfielder, can play central midfielder, good passer of the ball with 16 in that attribute as well. So a very good addition. He's never going to play for City, is he? Let's be real. Igor uh, Matanovic comes in from Hanover as well for 1.1 million pounds. Good striker option. He's basically our Mitro replacement in a way. 17 jump and reach, six foot four. He's that physical option that we do need should we have to go there, uh, which is good to see. And Fetsi Ebosel comes in from Napoli for 975k as well. Right back, 19 pace, 18 acceleration. Can play anywhere up and down the right and left hand side again. Versatile, versatile squad option for us. Rafael Guerrero comes in on a free transfer as well. He's lost all of his physical attributes, but can play in a number of key positions for us. And also at 33 years of age, you need that experience in your team. We signed Tyler Morton from Liverpool. His contract ended there. Uh, so we picked him up on a free transfer. Again, superb signing on a freebie. We also uh, got this guy, Gaetano Oristano. Um, striker can play can can play anywhere across the middle again versatile options guys you need these in your team because everyone gets injured in fm it seems this year ivan never ne never never stetich maybe uh goalkeeper option for us again we've got some good goalkeepers he's not going to start ahead of bergstrom but is a good player nonetheless good goalkeeping attributes on him high strength high jumping reach as well uh along with being six foot five is good to see uh, Silas, uh, Silas is another good option for us. Again, German goalkeepers, you can never have too many of them. There's loads of them out there, uh, but you need that depth in that goalkeeper position. And then, yes, I've left this one to the end. We're paying £3 million to have Evan Ferguson on loan for the season. I don't know what's happening here. It's absolutely ridiculous. If we look at this guy's uh, history, Brighton not really playing him. They loaned him to the friggin' championship last season for 250k to Leicester. We're having him for the season. I want to play him every minute of every game. He's amazing. I really want to sign him. Optional future fees of 111 million. We won't be paying that. But you never know what we could be able to do. I can't believe he's here. I don't understand what's going on. FM's weird sometimes. We also have to talk to you about this man. Jonah Deichman come through our youth intake a couple seasons ago. And I'm going to play him. I think he has high potential. He's got that five-star potential ability. He is only 16 years of age. But I want to play him a lot. And I want to see how he develops. Relatively decent physicals for someone of his age. Um, and has decent attributes in the right amount of technicals. Obviously, his dribbling needs a bit of work to be a winger. I obviously also need to convert him to be a natural in this attacking midfield left position. Which we will do but he's got high technique he's good on both feet i think he with along with the high potential i think he can do very very well for us and it's nice to have a homegrown player in your starting 11 like actual homegrown from your academy so if we quick pick without restriction the unpicked positions this is how we are looking going into the season obviously evan ferguson skews the star ratings on everybody in the team quite considerably but i actually think that the rest of the team is very very solid i think we're looking good going into the season and we need to because we have the uefa super cup against arsenal as europa league winners they won the champions league uh, and we are going into the champions league for the very first time so that's going to be really really cool in season number four the board actually wants us to qualify for the europa conference league in the bundesliga this time around rather than just avoiding relegation we are 100 to 1 to win the title we're predicted to finish in eighth i want to finish as high up as possible i want champions league football for that fifth and final season so we need to get into it and see how we can get on in season number four After last season's Europa League victory, we kicked off our season taking on Champions League winners Arsenal in the UEFA Super Cup. This was always going to be an uphill battle against the Moneybags Premier League team, and we made our life a little bit harder, giving away a penalty in the first half, which Bukayo Saka easily converted. Then in the second half, Martin Odegaard made it 2-0, and we couldn't really impact the game at all to see Arsenal lift the trophy. Season 4 also saw our Champions League debut, and it was good to rub shoulders with some of Europe's elite clubs. We did manage to win games in the league phase against Lons, Napoli, AC Milan and Sporting along with a draw against Galatasaray to finish 13th in the table and qualify for the knockout stages of the competition. Here we face Spanish side Valencia and the first game was on the road ended in a 0-0 draw giving me hope that we would manage to progress to the next rank. Then back in Germany things were a little bit more routine for us as youngster Jonah Deichmann gave us the lead on the 20th minute and we didn't really look back. Goals continued to flow for us in the second half but it was 
the two goals in the final 10 minutes of the game that gave us a safe passage into the round of 16. It was Italian champions into Milan here and we took the lead in the first leg through Marcel Hartel, but against the run of play, Inter scored twice in the final 20 minutes to give them a lead to take back to Milan. And we gave it a right good go in the second leg, but Inter's quality and experience in these situations was too much for us to handle, with them winning 5-2 on the night and 7-3 on aggregate. But the Champions League money coming into the club for actually making it to this stage of the competition is very, very welcome. Domestically, after being losing finalists the last two seasons, we could not keep up that Pokal streak for a third year. This season, we did make it through to the quarterfinals, even with an impressive victory against RB Leipzig thrown in there for good measure. It was actually Stuttgart who ended our run at the quarterfinal stage, where the home side scored either side of an Ever Ferguson strike to see our remarkable streak in this competition come to an end. And finally, in the Bundesliga, we got off to a remarkable start, winning our first four games, including wins against Bayern, Leipzig and Dortmund, which was a massive statement of intent. We did lose a couple of games before the winter break, but you you can see how impressive we have been in the league this time around. It will come as no surprise that loan signing Evan Ferguson took the lead by storm, winning the golden boot, bagging 25 goals in 32 Bundesliga appearances and actually made it 38 goals in all competitions. After the winter break, we completed the league double against Bayern and Leipzig whilst we were powering through the league where we either won games or we lost them. But then in season four, it finally happened. We were crowned Bundesliga champions with a return of 76 points from our 34 games, beating Bayern to the title by six points. This was the first German top flight trophy in the club's history, so it was a monumental season. But now we have the big task of proving that it wasn't a fluke as we attempt to retain the Bundesliga title in our fifth and final season at the club. We have a transfer budget of £65 million to try and make that happen, which might not be enough to sign Evan Ferguson, but believe me, I'm going to try. Right, so going into the transfer window of season number five, we've had some long-serving players leave us in this window. Simon Adingra has gone to Fiorentina for £15.75 million. Pounds. Matteo Lovato has gone to Hoffenheim for 5 million quid as well. Harvey Vell has gone to Cologne for 3.6 million pounds. But you can see some of these players that we have picked up uh, going for fees as well. This is a big one. Marcel Hartel has finally departed the club. 32 years of age. He has gone to Union Berlin. Scored a lot for us this, uh, this save. Uh, and has been a very good servant for us. But we made 35 million pounds in transfers out. We did go spending. We couldn't sign Evan Ferguson. I was devastated, but we did strengthen all across the pitch. Uh, starting off, the most expensive signing, £24 million, Philip Jurgensen. This guy looks like an unreal goalkeeper, not one that I've used too, too much in this year's game, but looks like a fantastic goalkeeper. Great aerial reach, command of his area, 16s for one-on-ones and reflexes, along with good positioning, good agility. He just seems like the perfect goalkeeper for me. 26 years of age now, in the year 2028. Just looks like a fantastic, fantastic signing. He came in from Villarreal. We also spent £17.75 million on uh, PSV Eindhoven forward uh, Ricardo Pepe. Now, the US men's national team uh, guy has all the attributes that we need him to have. He's good on both feet. He's six foot one. He seems agile enough in terms of his physicals. Very well rounded where he needs to be. Could work on his pass in a little bit, but I don't need him to pass. I need him to put the ball in the back of the net, and he's got big boots to fill, taken over from Evan Ferguson. Alex Kral comes in from Leicester as well. Defensive midfield Midfielder, central midfielder, definitely on the more defensive side of stuff. We brought him in to play as our DM. He can also play at centre back. Very much the experience as well. 54 caps for uh, Czechia as well, which is absolutely fantastic. It wouldn't be a rebuild if I didn't sign Nipan, would it? He had uh, not really got his career off to a flyer. He'd moved from Rosenborg over to AC Milan, barely played. 10 million quid for my favourite wonder kid in this year's game. I think it had to be done, didn't it? We also signed Kevin Paredes from Wolfsburg on that left-hand side. Another US men's national team player or youth player to come in uh, to make Pepe feel uh, at home. We also signed Tyreek Bush Bushman uh, from Bayern. Uh, Centre-back, 17 jumping reach, 6 foot 2, young and German. Love to see it. We also signed this guy, uh, Seiler. Looks, again, another good option for us at the centre-back position. 18 work rate and 17 strength. 
ranked is very, very good. Senegalese international as well. 300k for this man, uh, Daniel Moreno. Not necessarily the best, but has 15 finishing, 14 heading, 14 technique. He has attributes to put the ball in the back of the net, but I don't know how much game time he's going to get this season. Kamari Doyle came in on a free transfer. I don't actually know what club he's at. I can't remember. Uh, Southampton. Love that for him. Coming in on a free transfer to play in midfield. And Aaron Ibrahimovic comes in on loan from Bayern Munich. Again, good versatile option. Coming in on loan for the season for an absolute free transfer on loan. We're not paying anything for him. Deichmann continues his uh, growth. But I do have to say he had a... Uh, a couple of injuries gash lower leg all sorts of injuries left right and center so that may have set him back a little bit last season but he did do okay for us 27 appearances in the bundesliga 13 assists in all comps not too bad but he will continue his development he is only 17 he is now capped by the german under 21 so you can see they see something in him as well uh so if we quick pick without restriction the best 11 with him in it, Pepe comes in as the striker. Uh, Nipan coming in on one hand side. Mika Hamilton. We've got good players who can play in a number of key positions for us this time around. So I think we are ready to rock and roll this time around. Competitions wise, Champions League again. We also have the Pokal. We also have the Bundesliga. I wanted to see how we got on in the Super Cup. And we beat Dortmund in this one. Two goals, both in injury time. One in the first half, one in the second half. So we've already added a bit of silverware to our trophy cabinet this season. But the Bundesliga. We want to retain it. We want to prove it wasn't a fluke. Season preview has us 50 to 1 to win the title. Bayern are obviously odds on favourites. They've got Pep back again after he's had a spell at Aston Villa, which is absolutely crazy. I don't understand. Oh, that's just his playing career. I wish they would show his managerial career. Hold on. If we go down here, maybe. There we go. Yeah, he's gone from Man City after being sacked to being Villa manager. And then he's gone to Bayern, which is crazy. FM being FM, I suppose. Um, so let's simulate this fifth and final season to see if we can retain the Bundesliga. Before we get into the results of our fifth and final season, I want to thank you guys for being here at this stage of the video. It's going to be well over 30 minutes at this point. So if you are still here, I want to say thank you. But I also want you guys to let me know that you are still here St. Pauli used the pirate flag a lot. I just want you to comment the pirate flag emoji down below just so that I know that you're here. If you don't have the pirate flag emoji, just comment your favorite emoji down below to let me know that you are still here going into the results of our fifth and final season. But that's enough waffle from me. Let's get into the season review. After a great win in the DFL Super Cup, I wanted to carry that momentum into the Pokal and we advanced through the first few rounds with relative ease before facing Hamburg in the quarterfinals. We got off to a great start in this one, but we actually opened up a three goal lead on the day but Hamburg came back into the game with two goals of their own but we managed to hold on and move into the semi-finals with a massive win over our city rivals. Here we take on Dortmund the team that we defeated in the Super Cup earlier on in the season. Englishman Jamie Byro Gittens gave Dortmund the lead in the 22nd minute and then in the second half it all fell into anarchy as both teams received red cards. Sadly, we couldn't get the goal that we needed to equalize to see Dortmund get their own back on us and move into that Pokal final. But our defense of the Bundesliga got off to a fantastic start with a nine-game unbeaten run, with eight of those games seeing us collect all three points. Our main man this season was summer signing Ricardo Pepe, who dominated up top for us. In the Bundesliga, he banged 24 goals in 28 games and went on to score a huge 41 goals in 50 games in all competitions, which is a fantastic return from the America. I also have to give a shout out to another summer signing, goalkeeper Philip Jurgensen, who had an outstanding season keeping 20 clean sheets in all competitions, and he does have all of the attributes of a top, top goalkeeper in the game. After the winter break, we came back with a loss to Schalke, but then got back to winning ways, winning our next five in a row. Results were still consistent throughout the remainder of the season to see us win our second Bundesliga title in a row, this time beating Dortmund to it by seven points. Which means that's Champions League football again next season and in this season's competition we were impressive in the league phase winning four of our eight games along with two draws and two defeats to see us achieve an 11th place finish in the table. Moving into the knockout stages of the competition we were drawn against Portuguese side Benfica who are actually a team who beat us in the league phase. We had to travel to Lisbon for the first leg but got off to a flyer with Mika Hamilton giving us the lead inside the first two minutes. But despite us dominating the game Benfica were able to level the game in the 90 
96th minute to see us return to Germany all square. However, the second leg was much more routine for us with several players putting in top performances to see us win 4-1 on the night with a 5-2 win on aggregate. So we moved into the round of 16 where we faced European giants Liverpool and this time we'd be at home in the first leg. And to my surprise, we ripped Liverpool apart from start to finish with us scoring three unanswered goals to give ourselves a great chance of getting a job done at Anfield. But we still managed to do ourselves justice on the road. We did lose the game 1-0 with Victor Osimhen getting the goal, but we did enough defensively to see us progress to the quarterfinals for the first time. It was Inter Milan in the quarterfinals, and in the first leg in Hamburg, it was a game of two penalties, with Juan Miranda giving us the lead in the first half before Lautaro Martinez struck to pull Inter level with five minutes of the 90 remaining. However, it was us who struck first in Milan as Ricardo Pepe applied a finish to a lovely cutback. Alessandro Bastoni managed to head into level in the second half, but it was the American Ricardo Pepe who had the last laugh in this one by scoring again in the 83rd minute to send us into an outstanding, remarkable, monumental semi-final. And this is where it felt like we were facing the final boss as we came up against 14-time champions Real Madrid and their manager Ange Postacoglu. We were at home again for the first leg, but it was the visitors who struck first through Eduardo Camavinga, but we were handed a lifeline on the hour mark as a Nipan shot hit Federico Valverde and went flying into the Madrid net to make it 1-1. That seemed to give us great confidence as we then added a second and third goal before Camavinga was able to add his second on the night in what was a little bit of a smash and grab performance from Real Madrid when you look at the final stats. In the Bernabeu, we extended that lead early as home from the far post after a lovely cross but then the inevitable happened. Federico Valverde made up for his first leg own goal by scoring twice in the right net before half time to make the game all square on aggregate. Then in the second half Madrid scored again as Brahim Diaz beat Jurgen at his near post to see Madrid advance to another Champions League final. But this season was still outstanding for St Pauli and back-to-back -back Bundesliga titles cannot be sniffed at. And this is where I'm going to leave the save and passings over to you. You guys can pick up these save files from this point over on my Patreon right now. I will leave a link to that down in the description. I'll also put it in the top comment as well. Um, but if you did enjoy it, please do go and check out some more rebuilds on the channel, guys. All the rebuilds that we've done are on this playlist right here.